sisi speaker uh, a kuweza hata siku moja kuzungumza sentence hata moja ya Kiingereza. Sasa everything is possible if you decide to be focused in it and practice and practice and practice. So give you all the names in the world. All the names. Kama ni mwanamke atakukimbia, girlfriend atakwacha. But uh, if you keep fighting for your dream, you will see the way out. Kwa hiyo naomba kwa makofi makubwa tumkaribishe Mr. Ezra Makuru. Topic yake ni your knowledge, your mind and take some change for your success. So to prove kwamba Kiingereza kinatoka sasa, he is going to use English throughout. You have a chance also. This is your audience. So I Thank want you. to see your minutes. So you. go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Um, what, did I, what do I say? Do I say Happy New Year? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Um, because of the time that I have, and I sort of prepared myself to teach today, and then maybe speak at the end, like five minutes. But today, I prepared myself to teach. Okay, the topic says, your knowledge, your mind, personal change, and success, right? Okay? Yes. Now, I think we need to define some terms before we, we proceed. Okay, what is knowledge? If I may start with that, what is knowledge? Have you ever asked yourself the question, what is knowledge? Or we just ever, I mean, we keep seeing and mentioning and speaking words that we've never taken the time to ask ourselves, what do they really mean? What is knowledge? Have you ever asked yourself a question like that? Knowledge, what is knowledge? Can I help you define that? Yes, please. What I have found out is that Knowledge is a collection of instructions on how to act in a certain way and how to make decisions in a given way. I repeat it. Knowledge is a collection of instructions. Collection of instructions on how to act and how to make decisions. That means in every knowledge you have instructions on how to act and how to make decisions. Take for example business knowledge, right? So in business knowledge, what you have there are the instructions on how to act and how to make decisions, right? Take, for example, leadership knowledge. Leadership knowledge. Take, for example, rulership knowledge. Take, for example, marriage knowledge. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes. So that means, or one can, can conclude that in this world, we do not have a knowledge. We have knowledges. Guys, do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes, exactly. We do not have a knowledge, but we have knowledges. Right? Yes. yes. But unfortunately, formal education, unfortunately, formal education is not the source of all the knowledges that we need in life, unfortunately. You don't learn 
or you don't receive the knowledge about money in formal education. You don't get that knowledge, you don't get business knowledge in formal education. You don't get customer care knowledge in formal education. And we need all these knowledges for life. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes. Are, are you getting it? Yes. Right. So we have knowledges, not a knowledge. So don't take a knowledge for the knowledge. Don't take a knowledge for the knowledge. If you have the knowledge about politics, don't take it to be all the knowledge in the world. Do you understand? But there's another term that I have used in that equation. I said mind. What is mind? Can I help you define this word? The word mind has three major definitions. The first one is memory content. The mind is not your brain. Your brain has nothing to do with your mind. Your mind is the memory content. It's like the water in this bottle, right? Do you understand? The relationship here is water is contained and the bottle is a container, right? So your mind is contained in your brain. Your brain does not create your mind. Your brain does not create the ideas that you have. I know that most of us are confused. We confuse, we mistake IQ. You see, we have that we call intelligence, so IQ, right? But remember, those of us who take some time to study th these things, we have come to realize that we do not have IQ alone. We also have MQ, which means mind quotient, right? Are you with me? So, the first definition of the word mind is the memory content. And where do you get your memory content from? Do you get it from food? Do you go eat bananas to get it? So you come to the conclusion that what we contain in our brain are the knowledges, the different knowledges. So you've been containing all these days of your life, you've been containing in your brain different knowledges. Do you understand? But the second meaning of the word mind is collective. When you talk about in the second place. When you talk about mind, you're referring to understanding. Attitude. And will. Right? Understanding, attitude, and will. Now, since I said this second meaning of the word mind refers to understanding, and it's about what you contain in your brain. That means you cannot have understanding and attitude and will for what is not in your brain. You cannot have understanding and attitude and will for what you're not contained within your brain. If you do not have business knowledge in your brain, 
that means you do not have understanding in business. You have no mind for business. If the knowledge of business is not in your brain, if it's not a part, if it's not a, con a, com a component, <coughs> are you hearing what I'm talking about? Yes. yes. So you can go start business without the knowledge of business because you don't have the mind of business. The mind of business is a product of a knowledge of business. Now we have so many people with the knowledge of chemistry and they just go into business. When all they know in, they have understanding in all the equations, chemical equations, they try to start business with that knowledge. And that is why there's a lot of failure because people do not have the mind of business. Don't take a mind for the mind. Don't go use your professional, your teaching mind to do business. There is a mind for business. And the mind for business can only be produced from the knowledge of business. In order for you to have the mind of money, you need the knowledge of money. Now the question is, do you have the knowledge of money? Do you have the knowledge of business before you start business? Do you have the knowledge of money before you start struggling to accumulate? <clears throat> Do you have? Do you have the knowledge of knowledge before you decide to get married? Do you have that knowledge? Because if you don't have the knowledge of marriage, that means you don't have the mind of marriage. Because you can't go with your medical knowledge into marriage. You don't have the understanding. You don't have the attitude. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes. Yes. You don't have the will. So the problem with most people is getting into things that we don't have mind for. We always get into things that we don't have mind for. Here is where our failure is. Am I talking to someone? Yes. yes. All right. Then, the third meaning of the word mind is decision making. So be very careful when you hear this word mind decision making. And that is why I can tell you, well, why didn't you come to the meeting? Oh man, I changed my mind. That means I changed my decision, right? That's another meaning of the word mind. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Okay, so with me here, with me here, I don't use the word mind to mean, well, I could use both. I mean, all the three. But I basically mean mind, which means eclectic, act, I mean, understanding, attitude, and will. So from today, knowing that we do not have understanding, we have understandings. We do not have understanding, we have understandings. We do not have attitude, we have attitudes. What is your attitude about money? What is your attitude about business? You're teaching attitude. 
He's not to use this business because it's different. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And these things are not inborn. The mind is not inborn. The brain is inborn, but the mind is not inborn. Your brain is inborn, but your mind is not inborn. Are you with me? Yeah. All right. Then I said, knowledge, mind, personal change, and success, right? Now, let me define personal change. How do you know that now you were changed personally? Do you go change the way you dress? Do you go change your color? Do you go, you know, you just use uh, makeup, makeover, right? For ladies, right? So you say, now I am changed, right? Do you say that? Personal change means Starting living a different lifestyle and making decisions a different way. Personal change means if you've been living this way, now you start living a different way. And you start making decisions a different way. That means you have changed personally. Now, how do you change you? How do you change you? How can a person change himself? How do you change you? Have you ever asked yourself the question, how can I change me? Because you first need to know you now so that you can know the you that you're trying to change. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Because you can't go into the business of changing you if you don't know the you that you're trying to change. So you need to know the you now. But then how do you know the you? See, most of us, I can tell you, I mean, I am still in search of trying to get the full me I haven't come to the point of knowing the full me, but I am still in search. And I believe if I ask you the same question, some of you may say, I know myself. But I can assure you, most of us don't know us. We don't know ourselves. How do you define you? We are not defined by how we look. Essentially, we are a collection. We are a collection of topics of inner conversation. You are a collection of topics of inner conversation. Listen to me. We have the mind, which is the memory content, right? But then there is another dimension. We call it in a conversation. Memory content and in a conversation. You heard people talk about it. you're speaking in the mind. There's nothing like bad speaking in the mind. We have a place. Well, these conversations do take place within us. It's not really in the head. Are you with me? Yeah. Well, this is what they normally call the soul. The empty space within you along the gut. If you go study the mechanism of speech production, you will know what I am talking about. It takes place along the gut. 
nothing here. So you have things in here, but they come down. You don't speak them in here, they come down along with God to be spoken, and they go along outside to your mouth, right? So in a conversation. Now, which is the soul? From the inner conversation, then you know your lines. You know your hearts. You know your spirits. Right? Now, your mind, your heart, I'm not talking about the organ that pumps blood. I'm talking about the other heart that you claim to love with. That's what I'm talking about. Or do you love someone with this one? The organ that pumps blood? Huh? No, right? So I'm talking about the heart that you love with. Okay. So we have minds, hearts, and spirit. Okay? All these are not structures. Your mind, your heart, and your spirit. They are not structures. They are contents. So your heart is a content. Your mind is a content. And your spirit. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. But you see, we have the general memory content here. And in here, you have knowledges. The general memory content in your brain. And we have knowledges in there. And remember, Knowledges are collections of instructions on how to act and how to make decisions. Collections of instructions on how to act and how to make decisions. So you have all these things in the memory content of your brain. And then, and then, Your understanding and attitude, your understandings and attitudes and wills are products of inner conversation. <clears throat> what you speak emotionally in your inner conversation. What you speak emotionally in your inner conversation determine your heart. <laughs> so your heart is the emotional content of your brain. When we talk about heart, we're referring to all your emotions, but your emotions are from speaking. You don't become angry without speaking, right? You don't become hateful without speaking. So you're speaking some things in your inner conversation and they awaken the, the emotion of hatred. This is all from the memory content of your brain. Your emotions are not inborn. Your emotions are not inborn. Your emotions are products of your knowledges. What knowledges are you contained with in your brain? Growing up, what have you been receiving growing up? What have you been receiving growing up? And how do we receive? We receive by seeing, seeing, and hearing. As a little child, you saw dad and mom fighting. <laughs> if, you, if you saw dad angry every time, 
That's the emotion. That's the knowledge you receive. And you're going to have the same emotion. You will be slow to anger because, because that's how you saw a dad. That's the knowledge you receive. You saw a dad kicking mom. That's the same emotion you're going to have, the same heart. You're going to do the same to your wife. Because that's, that's the knowledge you receive. We don't start receiving knowledge. Knowledge is when we go to school. You start receiving knowledge immediately after you become a full being in your mother's womb. So mothers, you have to be very careful with what you say because the baby is receiving. They start receiving at month three. What do you say when you're pregnant? Because you're feeding knowledge to the baby. And so they come out with some emotions. Because in order for any discussion to become emotional, to change from your heart, to become emotional, it has to be regular in your inner conversation. If something <coughs> becomes regular, if you keep speaking the same thing over and over again, you run into a full sense of experience, it, it goes into your emotional content. So your heart, your emotional content defines your heart. And then your non-emotional content, so your mind in this context is your non-emotional content, right? Okay, now in here you have different understandings, you have different attitudes, you have different wills. Depending on the knowledge that you have. Are you hearing? Hmm? Huh? So you have different understandings. The question is, what is your understanding in business? What is your understanding about money? What is your understanding about leadership? What is your understanding about dealing with people? A friend of mine, I heard a friend of mine teaching about people skills. Do you have the people skills? Because if you have never received that knowledge, that means you don't have the understanding in reality. But, but one thing that you need to know about knowledge, in every type of knowledge, we have the right knowledge and the wrong knowledge. Like we have the right knowledge in business and the wrong knowledge in business. Now, what knowledge have you received about business? What knowledge have you received about marriage? If you keep listening to people say, oh, you know, women are a problem, women are a problem, that's knowledge you are receiving. And so your understanding will never be any different from that. Your attitude will never be any different from that. Oh, it's the man? Oh, it's the same father. So, you know, they come from the same father, same mother. That is, you are developing an understanding and an attitude. That will be your attitude, right? Okay. But the spirit of a person is the regular content. Of your inner conversation. What's the regular content of your inner conversation? You can sit down and ask yourself, what do I always talk about? What do I always talk about? Every day, what is regular? What is always in your inner conversation? What are the topics that are always in your inner conversation? Do you have
have topics that you oh, specifically, do you have topics that you always talk about in your inner conversations every day? You say, this is, this is what I talk about on the inside of me. Because you can't be what you have not chosen. We were not born to be who we are automatically. You don't become a businessman automatically. You have heard people talk about they are born leaders. I can tell you the truth, they are no born leaders. The knowledge that the knowledge is that you have received growing up determine who you are. And then you have to choose. If you choose to be a businessman, the question is, do you always speak business in a conversation? Because you can't be a businessman if you don't have the spirit of business. Friends of mine, you must understand that you can't be a businessman if you don't have the spirit of business. If you do not have the regular content of your inner conversation about business, how can you become a businessman if you don't always talk about business in you? Because if you don't always talk about business in you, you can't act as businessmen do. You can't. You really can't. If you always talk about Simba and the younger, if you always talk about discussions with politicians, I mean, that's, that's what we always talk about in the, in the conversation. And, and that is why we are so inclined in those things. Because that's, that's what has really defined. We have those spirits. We have those hearts. Are you with me? Yes. Now, I said, you can't be what you have not chosen to be. And keep that you, if you say that I want to be a businessman, then make sure that you have the understanding and the attitude and the will and the heart and the spirit of businessmen. That's the difference. Successful business are the way they are because they have the mind and the right mind. Not the wrong, the right mind. So you go look for the right knowledge about any business that you want to become. We have different businesses, right? Yes. You can't just receive one knowledge of business and think you have all the knowledge in business. You can't receive short business or chicken business. I think that, that's, that's the business that will give you the understanding and the attitude and all these other businesses, right? So you need these specific knowledges. Now what you do, if knowledge has to become power to you, you guys have heard people talk about knowledge is power, right? If, 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 if any knowledge doesn't change your mind, your understanding, attitude, and will, and your emotions, your heart, and your regular inner conversation, if it doesn't change, that knowledge has not become power to you. Because if any knowledge takes your mind, heart, and spirit, that means you will start acting according to the instructions given in the knowledge. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Yes. What to do with the knowledge in order for the knowledge to become power to you? What you need to do? Just like we do with food. Huh? Just like we do with food. Now, if you haven't received 
the knowledge in school, in form or system of education. Go for the right sources. For example, in business. Look for the people who are successful in business. In this business, who are being successful? Who have made it to the top? Because those are the ones who have the right knowledge about bad business. And what you need to do is go take the knowledge they give you about business. But in order for this knowledge to change you, to change you, to change you, that means to change your understanding, your attitude, your emotions about business, your regular inner conversation. Like we do with food. We eat food. You eat the knowledge. You digest the knowledge. Right? You absorb the knowledge. And you assimilate the knowledge. You have to do that. If like I'm speaking to you here, I'm giving you knowledge, right? And then you just listen to the knowledge and go away. You don't eat the knowledge. You don't digest the knowledge. You don't absorb the knowledge. You don't assimilate the knowledge. This knowledge cannot be power to you because it cannot transform you. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Yes. Friends of mine, you have to be a businessman before you go into business. And how do you become a businessman? Go, personal change I'm talking about, because every success in life, every success in life is a product of a lifestyle. There's a lifestyle of businessman. You can't leave that lifestyle if you don't have the same mind, heart, and spirit. You can't leave that lifestyle. You can't leave a lifestyle and make decisions as a leader if you don't have the knowledge. If the knowledge of leadership has not transformed you, if the knowledge of leadership has not become your mind, heart, and spirit, and the only way any knowledge can become a part of your mind, heart, and spirit, you need to eat that knowledge, digest it, absorb it, and assimilate it. I'll give you one example. Don't you think it is a shame for doctors to be sick of lifestyle diseases? <laughs> Because if they really know that cancer, this is the cold, uh, maybe, what else? Oh, pressure, this is the cold. Is it a shame for a doctor to overeat when they know that what we're going to get at the end of the day? That means we have some people who've gone to school and they have received knowledges, but those knowledges have not changed to them because they are not living according to the instructions they got in the knowledge. Don't you think it is a shame for a lawyer to break laws? Because he went to school and learned the laws, right? Why do they break these laws? Why are they the first to break the laws? And they know the reason is because they don't eat, digest, absorb, and assimilate so that the knowledge can change their understanding, attitude, and will, and heart, they, their emotions, and their regular inner conversation. Are you with me? Yes. So we are collections. We are collections of topics of inner conversations. Now, 
Who are you? Ask yourself. Because you are not found on the outside. You are found on the inside. On what you always speak. Because you don't act what you don't always speak. You don't make decisions according to what you always speak. I spoke to you here last time that man was not created to make decisions with the heart, with the emotional content. You ever seen people make decisions with emotions, right? Yes. <coughs> Do you know all your emotions right now? If you want to know you, you need to know. These are my emotions. Do you know that you have, you have slowness? I mean, you have the emotion of slowness to anger. Do you know that you have the emotion of patience or long suffering? Do you know your emotions? Do you know all your emotions? Because if you don't know all your emotions, that means you don't know you. You have to know. So personal change, personal change is I have to first know the topics of my inner conversation. What are the regular topics of my inner conversation? I want to be a businessman, but do I have the knowledge of business? Do I always talk about business within me? I mean, you don't go do business when you don't talk about business within you. If you always talk about music, sports, politics within you, how can you become a businessman? You can. So we need the knowledge of business. I am talking about experience here. When I wanted to speak English, I started somewhere in upon the book that I read, that a person, you can be a person of somewhere you've never been. And I, I decided to study, how do you become a different person? I was born in the village, he told you. And I remember those days when I was just going behind my mother, going to the farm on bare feet. Can you imagine? To the farm. No English in me. Not a single word of English. Going to the farm. Have you ever been in what we call pod? When you do that, you go in water and it gets up to here, you are in, in muddy and I was like that. I was I was I was I was wearing sock clothing. You got very and I had no idea of speaking English like I do today. But what did I do? I went to school, learned all the tenses, as you guys have gone to school, learned all the tenses the parts of speech, but what has made a difference in my life? What has made this person that you hear speaking here is changing the memory content. I realize that in me, in my memory content, there is no English. So what I decided to do is Feed on English. Put English in the memory content of my brain. Not just feed on English. Digest the English. Absorb the English. And assimilate the English. Make it my mind, my heart, and my spirit. Today, there is no day that go of my life without me speaking English deep on the inside of me. So my day is like, I speak in Swahili, I got English. I speak in Swahili, I got English. I speak in Swahili. So when, when I want to speak English, it's the English spirit in me that speaks to you. It's not the Swahili spirit that comes to speak English to you. And that's the problem with most Tanzanian here. They could speak amazing English, but the problem is that 
They have increased in the memory content, but they have not digested, absorbed, and assimilated English that it could change their regular inner conversation. Is English a part of your regular inner conversation? This is not a knowledge of tenses. It's allowing English to become a regular inner conversation. Now, if you want to be pushed as a businessman, if you want to be pushed as someone who saves money that you may accumulate money, do you always speak about money? That topic about money, is it regular in your inner conversation? That topic about business, is it regular in your inner conversation? How is your day in your inner conversation? You know, we don't care about inner conversation, right? We really don't. And that is why we are taken and carried away by just anything because you don't know you. Like I have decided that I want, I want to be a miracle worker. So I have to think like miracle workers because I just want to be influential, right? So what I do, I find out what kind of topics that should be regular in my inner conversation. Topics that need to be measured. So I find out other miracle workers. What do they talk? So I have this topic and this topic and this topic. So when my inner conversation wants to go to something else that is not me, I say, no, don't go into that discussion, my inner conversation, because that's not you. So you need to have specific inner conversations and you keep speaking that and you keep filling yourself with more knowledge about that and don't allow to be carried with other topics of inner conversation. That is how you can change you. If you decide to become a businessman, if you become to to become, if you decide to become a person who can accumulate, you can become. But the thing is, your inner conversation. You can become that if your inner conversation is stayed on sports, politics, and all the simple things. Because you also need to be very careful about what you listen to. What you listen to, is it feeding you? Is it feeding the topics, your regular topics? Because otherwise people will take you from who you are. And you'll start acting a different way and making decisions a different way. So every day I keep feeding the English in me. I keep feeding the English in me. And so the English in me is growing. If I were speaking English for three hours, now I can speak for seven hours. I can be on a bus and speak English within me for seven hours. Because that's how native speakers do. They speak English in their inner conversations, and that's why they speak English that way. I don't need people to talk to. In fact, at home, I don't speak English with my family. But why do I not lose English? It's because it is regular in my inner conversation and I keep developing it, right? So that is how you can change you. That is how you can change you. So you need to know your inner conversation, your regular inner conversation, your emotional content, your regular emotional content, and your non-emotional. May God bless you and keep you.